Hey everybody, my name is Eric Emil, and this is HOA Presents. This is a different kind of video for me. Unlike my time lapses or my live streams, I'm simply sitting down and working my way through a rebuild of a story idea I called Super Gav, while redesigning the main character. It is as the title suggests. No soundtrack, a few light edits up front, but pretty much just me working and talking out this idea in real time. It's a fun concept, and hopefully the first of many Prof Talks. So please, sit back, get comfy, and enjoy the show. Alright. So, this is a different kind of video for me. The idea is simple. I'm going to take you through the Cree... Well, not so much the creation, but the uh, fixing of a character from an old idea of mine. See, I had an idea a while ago, uh, a number of years ago, I could probably look up. You'll end up seeing the stuff on the screen somewhere in this area. Maybe? Perhaps? I don't know. We'll find out in post. Both of us. Together. So... What I did was I came up with this idea for a comic that I called Super Gaff. So, oh. <laughs> wrong, R wrong pencil. I'm actually going to get to this uh, in a bit. I think it's spelt with an E. It this give you an idea as to how long it's been since I had this idea. I can't remember how to spell the name properly. But I'm not gonna really need the issue on here or story page or lineup page. So the idea behind this right now is to give you guys an idea as to how I come through and actually do this type of thing. I have a character from Super Gaff. Uh, again, the name really isn't uh, the the name of the character really isn't uh, of much merit. It was, I believe, a 24-hour comic book idea. But the 24-hour challenge has given me plenty of uh, fodder when it comes to doing things and coming up with ideas. One of the ideas was Night of the Lapis. This one in particular, uh, Super Gaff, I think it happened a couple of years later, and it was based around the idea of like Super Sentai warrior type things, that the costume characters that you normally see in Japan, stuff that would end up coming up over here like uh, Power Rangers or Kamen Rider or even um, Big Bad Beetleborgs, which is a title I haven't thought of in a number of years. So the idea of this is at the time of this recording, it's a couple of days before Easter. I want to do something rabbit-themed, as I am wont to do, because I like drawing little cartoon rabbits. And this guy kind of came, uh, kind of popped back in my head after, oh god, numbers and numbers of years. I really haven't thought of this guy in a very long time. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, alright, well, I should do something with him, because he's this, this little rabbit guy trying to see if you guys can actually see this. The, what I do is I tend to uh, sketch with a 4H pencil. The nice lightness allows me... I can barely see it, and uh, the camera's kind of picking it up a little. But that's kind of the, uh, the purpose of it. So I had this guy, a oh, little rabbit dude. Going with a just a basic body shape so that I can... Get this 
just so I can get this guy down and kind of fleshed out for you real quick. Although, again, I can just pop up some pictures, but this allows me to draw and talk. Gives purpose to the uh, to the uh, actual video. So I had this guy he had like these little gauntlets on his. You know, I had these little uh, gauntlets and had like these sharp points for shoulders. And uh, because I love, I'm a sucker for designs with really big flowing things. And this guy was gonna have, was gonna have body armor, simple little chest piece. Then the stereotypical Sentai belt with a with a knob doohickey thingabob in the middle, usually used for transformation. I believe I base it off the old school Power Morphers from Power Rangers. The kick for this guy was in classic in classic profit fashion. I love monster movies and werewolves and vampires and stuff like that. Crazy Mutants was that this guy ends up changing from a human to a rabbit. And I'm giving him the crazy anime hair, and yes, if I did do this in... It's like, if I did do this in co color, he would have blue hair because as longtime internet fans of random stuff know, you gotta have the blue hair. So I had the guy like this, and the uh, big flowing thing was... like that. A uh, scarf. Now the reason why it was called Super Gaff is because he messed up. In the, in the little two pages that I actually got a chance to write and draw, he was supposed to say, I believe he was supposed to be like saying, body armor energize. But the weird, the weird creature thing that he, that he found that he was supposed to fight. Kind of looked kind of rabbity. A slip of the tongue. He ends up saying bunny armor energies. And he ends up doing his whole big transformation. And he ends up, uh. looking like a cartoon bunny. Well. That was good for a two-page joke, and I never really touched it again. But when I was thinking about it, I was going to come up with this great big old picture, right? In fact, this entire video was premised on the idea that I would film myself drawing this gigantic picture. And I still have it over by my side, which I can just grab right here off camera. Do 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 do, and this. This is effectively what I was coming up with, an idea of having it, so it's more like uh, like the ridiculous things that you'd see, the, uh, I believe they're flashcards, or, or uh, the little in-between cards that you see on anime between commercials, the little interstitial things, and he was going to have a big old version of them, like the postcard thing, him in the background, you know, do a, I would do a logo that says like Super Gaff, and have it like all big and bold right there, and have him try doing the Gainax pose. Now, my anatomy is not strong, 
it's something that I still deal with. In fact, I use a lot of, when I generally do things where I need to get a pose right, I'll actually use toys and figures and stuff like that, like maquettes. But no matter what I was doing, the, I was trying to do the Gynax pose, and it's it's boring. It's a person standing there with their uh, looking grumpy with their arms crossed. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, I got to do something that I got to do something different. And I realized, after all these years, I really wasn't feeling this design. I mean, again, to go back to the... Uh, um, to go back to what I was showing before, this whole thing, the gauntlets, and then the body armor, the belt, and the, all that. I didn't even put the, uh, you know, I didn't put the shoulder pads. I just, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. Just wasn't feeling it. So I said to myself, I'm like, self, you got to do something. Easter's coming up. Why not step through it? See the stuff that I like. Stuff that I like about this guy is I absolutely like. Well, let's go in a pencil that I can actually see. Because we're not getting into the sketch phase yet. We're just going to try and come down and do a little bit of a list. So, the things that I kind of want to keep is. Scarf. I don't know. When I, when I think of like the older like the older costumes that I always liked. There was always something unique about them, and one of the things that I loved about a scarf, mostly because you can do... A, a scarf can act like a cape when it, comes to a, when it comes to a character like this, and that you can have it flutter and flow, and even when the character's standing there, you always have at least one point of movement. They can be in a full body suit, heavily armored, looking like just a chunk of, just a big old square chunk of nothing on the page. But as long as you have something fluttering through, it'll still give a bit of dynamicness to it. Almost like, uh, well, you'll see. You'll see. It, it gives it, it gives it that action when, where there normally wouldn't be. Another thing that I like about it is... belt. Now this is very this is actually getting very much into the whole Cayman Rider thing, which was kind of an inspiration for it, was the old school Cayman Rider, at least one of the old school Cayman Rider that I know. The character had a scarf. Well he also had a motorcycle, but I could drive on the motorcycle. He had a scarf and he had a neat belt. And the whole transformation thing was like, yeah, and then you get a chance to see like the uh, you get a chance to like see the belt becomes a becomes part of the costume. Now, here's what happened with the character idea. Now, I called it Super Gaff for a long time because he messed up. While I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with the character, I was coming up with I uh, with ideas from the, for the story. Now, the story itself. The reason why I'm putting this is it's going to inform the idea behind it is going to inform the uh, character's design. So you got what is he? he is a superhero. Like in a lot of those stories, like Power Rangers and stuff, he is just a normal person who gains something. In this case. I like how I'm, I'm trying to uh, write in all capitals because it's it's quick for me, but also I'm trying to do it because it can be seen on camera and read easily. So we have normal kid super suit. My thought is less Shazam and more and more of the old TV show Greatest American Hero, a TV show that I. I used to love it. Average guy, a teacher, ends up getting an alien super suit, and he loses the instructions for it. The outfit only works for him, and he and a uh, he and an, an 
Oh, shoot. I think Robert Culp's character was a... I think he was a G-Man. But you have um, a teacher and a cop. Very 80s, so uh, Culp's character was very much, yeah, let's let's go over and beat the Ruskies with the super suit. While he's like, I don't know anything about this, I just want to go and teach my class. But I like that idea. I like that dynamic of this kid, he gets a super suit, and he doesn't know how to use it. Hence the whole messing up and ending up in turning into a bunny in a superhero costume. But that got me thinking, what more could I do? Another show that was around when I was a kid was a show called Manimal, where that was effective. Honestly, it was it was pretty much what it said on the tin. A guy who can transform into different animals at will. A weird weird show that I barely remember but I do remember that he used to be able to trans he's transform into like a like a cougar and then a hawk and stuff like that so we have uh, he was able to use the animal powers and I kind of like that idea not going so much uh, not going so much uh, full transformation but going like more like DC's Animal Man or Vixen where He's able to channel particulars about those creatures with the side effect of he ends up looking like him. So we have to fit. We're going to do fit different shapes. Which I really shouldn't call it. Really shouldn't call it story. I should call it something else. Actually, pretty much exactly what it is. It's... So, what does this thing need? It needs to need look like a superhero. It's a normal kid super suit, and he's a fit different shapes. That is pretty much the hook. The hook is if he yells out a different a different animal, he will end up getting the thing on that. So if he says like. Hawk armor energize, he will end up with wings. Or if he says frog armor energize, he will end up looking like a frog with a long tongue and a great vertical leap. With the rabbit, he would be uh, he would be quick like a money. So how do I refine this suit? This is very much off the cuff and yeah this is pretty much my my thoughts this is how I how I end up doing it so if it gets a little rambly yeah if it gets a little rambly I apologize I'll be a nice guy and I'll apologize now I already know how he looks when he's human So we got the classic prof bean like design. Now, usually to start off with a circle and I'll end up putting usually cut it up like that. I like doing very cartoonish heads when I do stuff like this, especially when I do stuff like this. It's a nice it's a nice quick shorthand. I use it in my comic uh, Biff the Vampire all the time for the character designs because I, it doesn't take that much tweaking to change the shapes and get a different character without suffering too badly from same face. Same face syndrome is a very real thing. I, I know a lot of people tend to uh, poke fun at it, but I know a lot of people who when they, do, when they draw their characters and they try to come up with different characters, they really get stuck on 
certain aspects of, uh, of face shapes that they like. So to try and lessen that as much as possible, it's definitely not going to take it away because they're all going to look vaguely, uh, vaguely childlike and vaguely, uh, vaguely cartoonish. To try and lessen that, I go through and I add certain things. I believe the way I had this character when he was human, I gave him a nice simple button nose. I always do the big eyes because I like being able to do the expressiveness. Give him a very neutral expression, because he doesn't need to have that that much of an expression in this. Oddly enough, if you if you read my comic, it's like if you read my Biff comic. Um, one of the things I actually used from this, because I, I try to recycle things as much as I possibly can from old ideas that I like. That way I'm not just sitting there like, hey, I got a brand new idea, and it goes nowhere, and then it really does go nowhere. So what I did was I kind of recycled his hairstyle for uh, for the character of Bra. So we got this guy. And yes, I will actually do a little bit more when I when I get towards the end, but just a nice light sketch for now. And then I get to bust out this and this one. I sketch with 4H. I finish off doing dark stuff with HB. And I usually use a little scrap of paper underneath my hand so that I don't smear it all over the place. And again, the advantage of using HB, uh, 4H is it's dark enough and soft enough where I can still be able to function easily without tearing through pieces of paper, uh, well, thinner sheets of paper than this, while still being light enough where if there's some residue left over and... I go and I ink this, I can do a light erase and be able to remove that easier than, say, uh, using non-photo blue. Another great option, in fact, I have a non-photo blue somewhere around here. Bruh, that's a... Uh... Oh. Here is another 4H. Prismacolor turquoise. Oh no, it's a regular pencil. Oh, I thought it was actually turquoise. Oh, the things that the things that artists get when they get, get uh, when they get Christmas and birthday gifts. Here we go. Stadler non-photo blue. Very nice pencil. Very good if that's how you want to go. But not exactly my preferred. Because I can also use this for shading too. Non-photo blue, not so much. You're actually adding color that way, and when you go to scan it in. It does turn out to be a lovely shade of blue. Especially when you go as hard as I do. So, we have this basic general head shape. So what I want to do is when uh, when I have him in effectively in other forms, kind of want to keep it simple, that way he's... Um, not changing up too much. Too, too much. There we go. 
Again, we're going to start with the little with the little button nose, only this time, because it's going to be a bit of a muzzle. In other words, the whole him becoming a rabbit. We're going to extend that out a bit. And then in the middle, we're going to go Still going to give a bit of that roundness to the bottom. Now the idea for this is to simply give them a couple of little a couple of little cute tufts. Nothing too nothing too crazy, nothing too different. That way he's easily distinguishable from if there was another animal character in the in the scene, you'd be able to tell that this uh, this guy and this guy, knowing the background of the story, that they're actually one and the same. Do the little, uh, do the little triangle nose. There you go. A little. Make it a little bit more bunny-like than what I did before. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing the whole uh, giant buck teeth, going to do a little thing like that. So just barely, just barely being shown. There we go. I give a little space between, I give a little space between the eyes by just simply going like that. Doesn't need to be too grand, cause yeah. Kind of sketching out some uh, wider eyes. And kind of put a little tough right here. Nothing too crazy. Kind of keep that. See on the screen over on that side of the world, I actually have the older picture of them, not just the uh, picture that I was drawn in the what would have been the previous version of this video but just an older version of the uh, character from the uh, from when I first tried drawing it so again we go with go with the hair which would be another marking that 
So if he turns into something that's covered in fur, he would, or with feathers, he would still have the weird hairstyle. Only this time, Give him the rabbit touch. And then, because I keep saying the bird thing, let's do another idea where we make him look bird like. Now this one we're going to go like that. Since I'm doing this on the fly, I don't really have a, uh, a bird in mind, so kind of getting the terrible looking generic beak. There we go. Three quick designs for just uh, for just the head. Now the idea is to give him a body, an outfit that can handle these changes while still looking kind of superhero-y and super. Well, yeah, very superhero-y and very. Not too really sure how to say that.
and not exactly the best way to do this, but again, doing this on the fly. Not really planning things out, just kind of letting my hand do its thing. standard pose. Let's uh, try to get some a uh, little bit of weird definition right here. Since the only thing I really want to keep from the old suit is the scarf and the belt, I'm pretty much free to do whatever might is. Uh, whatever my twisted heart desires. Just kind of rough in the head real quick. That way I've got an idea as to where I'm going to put the neck. upper arm and shoulder because again now by all means the way I design people is so non-standard it is terrible proportions are rarely ever right or at least in the outside in the outset and It ends up working for me because normally I'm doing a comic where you're not really usually seeing like about like right there of the character. Now, one thing that I don't want to do for this character is, um... Don't want him to be... Don't want him to look too... Don't want him to make him look too American. Uh, too western style, because um, I'm not really. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm versed enough in American comics where I know that there are just things that I never really was big on when it came to uh, outfit designs. Uh, the modern trend of doing outfit designs that you can literally buy in stores. I like, but it's not really going to fit this idea. I do want to keep some sort of uh, band or something on him as far as the arms go. make it almost like a, uh, a cuff of sorts. 
Now, a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of these characters have like uh, body suits, so you know, body suits and gloves. So I think I'm going to keep this band as being part of a glove. It's not very, uh, not very sentai to have like a, a cuff on a glove like that, but at this point in time I've kind of dropped all of that pretense, just desperately trying to make it not look anything like I'm trying to make it look a little bit less like it was, like it's a rip-off of these things that I that I grew up on, and more of it being inspired by. I want it to be inspired by stuff like, um, yeah, like the the superhero costumes that you've seen a lot of uh, uh, Japanese costumed live-action fighting genre type of uh, type of things. But I don't want it to. I don't want it to be that anymore. I don't want it to be like a riff on that. Like instead of making instead of giving him like shoulder pads that are look all crazy and sharp and giving him just a effectively making it so he has a bodysuit full of knives. I think something like uh Something nice and basic. Where it still looks like it's some sort of protection for his... You know, some sort of protection for his person. While still having that ability to move. And in the original, I ended up giving him pretty much a vest, which works if he only transformed into, like, one thing, but if in bird form I give him wing arms or something like that, which, honestly, for the types of humor that I like, would kind of work, have him with these giant wing arms, where the feathers just kind of work like hands and work like fingers, and have him question that, that's kind of, like, right up my alley. Because even in the original version of this, he's questioning why he looks like a rabbit and the little, and the little belt. Oh yeah, I should probably put that in. I think it's the one, one design that I'm definitely keeping. Definitely, definitely gotta have the belt. And it would help if I drew the belt right. Belts wrap around a body. <laughs> yeah. So he would have this little belt. Kind of like the idea of his outfit being a little... A little baggy. If only for the whole idea that he doesn't look like he's going to get much protection from it. But in the long run, he actually does. It'll stop bullets or laser fire or whatever I put in there. But I definitely do want to have something on his chest so that he... um. Something that looks vest-like, something that looks like it's a, like it would actually do some protection, like, like by all means, keep shooting me here. This effect, and your bullets don't affect me. Hmm. I will pull. from knights. Well, squires to be exact.
That way it also works in that you have something that looks like pauldrons. I believe that's the term for them, for the uh, shoulder pads. And you still end up with the ability to, well, I still end up with the ability to extend it out and make it so that this will change along with the form. So human, anthropomorphic rabbit, anthropomorphic bird, and actually have the wings start right here. It will start and go out and kind of get thicker as they go without this looking like it's too out of place or like it's crimping in where his arms would actually be. That's about where the knee should go. Right there. Now, one thing that I definitely want to do for him is if he says if he says the wording right and he says body armor energize, he just ends up in this regular suit. So I kind of have to design shoes for the guy. As a rabbit and as a bird or, or anything like that, I would definitely do just kind of keep that whole cartoony animalness in it. So for this, I'm thinking about, actually, I am thinking about, oh, there we go, Think about something like this. Because again, one of the good things about, uh, one of the good things about Gundam and stuff like that is, um, you can actually make one of these things, and all I'd really have to do is just, uh, maybe make a little bit of squares. It's always that under, the knees, be uh, below the knee, is really like the big thing, like the knee and the chest and a little skirt. Those are like the really big items that you normally see on things. Uh, I have another one over here too that I use for uh, helping with posing. Uh, here we go. For uh, Gundam X, all the design characteristics are down here in the legs and up here in the shoulders. Another, that's actually a, really des a design that I really like. Uh, let's see, do I still have it here? I think so, and it's dusty as all get out. You! <sighs> ah. Yeah, that's kind of funky. Alright, so for here, notice the leg. The leg is very simple. I kind of want to go for something like this, where there's... looks like there's a bit of a, a knee pad and a little bit of ankle armor. You go back there, and I have to dust you after. Eesh, got dust all over here. Ugh. All right. So for this, let's see. Uh, we'll go. Give him a terrible stance. Now I don't want to do the whole I don't want to do the whole sharp pointy toes like you can see on a lot of these guys. They they go with a very, very pointed foot for a lot of these uh, for a lot of these designs which is great for, you know, I had this guy's fingers interlaced for a pose, and I can't remember, can't remember what I was using him for. Some sort of a, it was either a comic or a, or a separate picture. I had him like that. Now, 
for this, they really end up with a lot of sharp points. I don't think I want to go that sharp with the uh, with the points for the human form. I think I want to make it more like a regular kind of a military a military boot with extra armor. That way, if for some strange reason I actually do go through with this project more than just a uh, more than just a quick video. Well, it's definitely not quick now. A quick video with some some done, poorly done designs. Mind you, the designs don't have to be poorly done. I recommend doing good designs. But when you're doing stuff quick and dirty and you're just kind of getting things down on paper, quick and uh, quick and dirty and poor design, this would be the this is effectively the first draft of a kind of sort of new idea. Anywho, so we're going to go like that. Kind of want to do the baggy thing again. That way, it looks a little more like you can, like there's more material there, and that things can happen. So, with the way that, with the way those legs look, they usually have ankle armor. I'm do some ankle armor. Bring this out back like that, and like that. And then for the rest of this, we're going to see on those, we usually have like some extra details. If the knee is right there, try to get it higher than the knee. Bring it down to there. That way, there's a bit of a visual, a bit of a visual element, a bit of a stop. See, if I was going to do this right, I would actually go and put the calf in. Actually, with this, I kind of have to do this right if I'm doing the, uh, kind of doing like an armored leg. The original design also had a lot of um, I believe I ended up putting like lines like right here to kind of play off the uh, some of the other elements. Make that a bit chunkier. Make this fake like this is more of a boot.
And now for the fun part, or at least the part that will make it so that I can make this guy look like he's fun and animated even when he's standing still. And that would be the scarf. Now before I just had it so that it was just kind of low and you were still able to see his face. For this... I want to be it. I want it so that his default is covered face. really doesn't work well in this particular design choice. Hmm. You know, because I do still want him to have the big head. We will instead just keep it low. I can even change the size of his head right now, because again, the advantage of just kind of fleshing things out and working things out. Make his head a little bit smaller. And then for the scarf, have it kind of give him the ridiculous shinobi scarf, which has no rhyme nor reason. It just is. And what is it? Long. Very long. One of the more fun parts of that, of uh, the, uh, well, that particular idea is uh, just running forever and watching as the scarf just kind of trails and goes Shh. It's like you run from here to here and the back of the scarf is still back here. It's like you're just kind of strung to that point. And every hero has to have some sort of a weapon. When it comes to these types of things, usually it's like some sort of a blaster thing or something like that. Now, in the original design in the gauntlets, I had, like, uh, blades. But, I don't know how I feel about that. Because, I mean, I, I like, it's like, I, I I really do like having superheroes have, like, close combat stuff, but not too sure how I'm feeling that with the design. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm good and ready to try and to try and finalize some of this look. I like how the head is still too far off. It's not even close to center. Oh, this is rough draft is so damn rough. All right, so when I'm drawing, one of the things I do is I will go through and I'll start with a 4H, and whether it be inking or not, I will switch between 4H and 
the final thing. In this case, it's the HB. And I will always clean up the sketch with a good old kneaded eraser. Kneaded rubber erasers are your friends. Not only do they help clean off things, but they are great for being little desk toys. Nice stress reliever. You can sit there and just be like, arr, arr, arr. bills, blah, 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 boss, blah, 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 customers, blah, 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 traffic, blah, blah, blah. Just sit there and, and destroy it. But my main use for it is lightening things up, removing a little bit of extra, a little bit of that extra uh, graphite. And then Biggie Bam. You can use these for a very long time and not have to get rid of them. At some point in time, because they are, uh, because like any other product, they will, I, I mean, this is, this will pick up graphite, this will pick up dirt on your desk. It will get funky. And once it starts getting funky, f usually for me, it's about six to nine months that these last me. Maybe a little longer, if uh, depending on how much I'm actually drawing and using it. But every six to nine months, I usually try to replace it because it will it will start to fall apart on you. And now for a sheet of paper to put under my hand, so I don't smear all this. Biggie bam. Now the idea with this is, I can draw here, put that, and then if I flip it around, I can draw down here, and work that. One thing that I do want to do, is I want to get that belt out of the way. One of the tools that I use is, I will use a shape guide, or just one of these. In this case, I might want to go with my smaller one if I can find it still. Although I think it might be buried on one of my other tables. No, no, no. Uh, is, it, is it? Yes, it is. Uh, not that one, but this one. There we go. Might as well pull out the big one, too. Now these little templates are a godsend. I use these for sketching, I use these for inking. Not this one in particular for inking because it's flat. When you use something that's flat and you ink, you end up with um, capillary action which could end up seeping ink underneath this and spreading it out to your picture, even when you're using a tech pen. But still, excellent for sketches. These, on the other hand, just, uh, looks, looks like they got little bumps right there. These are perfect, perfect, because they they stay up they stay up off the ground just enough. Now for this, I think I used you know I think I used the Coronor and not the uh, Staler. The only difference is is uh, the sizes. Because this still has squares, triangles. This one has uh, more of a selection than this one. But it's also, you know, a touch bigger. So I'm going to use this one. Now for this, I'm just going to go through. This is a 0.7, is 0 0.07 uh, mechanical pencil, or a point, no, wait, sorry, point, 
0.7 mm. You can barely tell. This is how long I've had it for. It's very well worn. This has lasted... If you can find good supplies, they will last you forever. This has lasted me the better part of the life of my comic strip. I think I got this towards the beginning, which would make it between 12 and 13 years. This one's a little newer, and this is a lead holder. I don't know why they call it a lead holder when they should just call it a... a I think it's like a two lead. But this is also... Um, uh, this is also HB lead. The This one came empty. And it's got a little selector on there to kind of keep keep an idea as to what it is, but it spins. It doesn't stay. It's not like if I keep it there, if I if I mess around with it too much, it will slide around. This one, on the other hand, it's just blue. Most Stadler stuff is. In fact, I think this one's a Stadler too. Can't really tell anymore because um, it's all been worn off. I do have one that has 4H in it. In fact, that was the one that you see that you saw me starting out with. This, I use these for when uh, in this size, I use these for uh, larger images or my sketchbook when I can't find my 4H pencil, or if I'm going someplace where actually a I mean, uh, sharpening a pencil is impossible. As for the erasers that I'm going to be using to keep this all nice and clean, we have a nice click eraser. This one just happens to be triangular so that it won't roll off my desk. And a nice big old chunky square right, uh, white eraser. I swear by the white erasers because I, do ha I did have a gray one that was a little too gritty and it was starting to chew into my paper a little too much. I'm not exactly the most perfect of people when it comes to this stuff, so... I swear by the white ones. They're really nice, they're really neat, really cheap. You can find them in, very, in a lot of places, not just art stores. In fact, I think I got that one from... I think I got that one from a card shop, like a greeting card place. It was in with their arts and crafts section. There we go. To give it that extra special little little feel. And then they give it a little bit of dimensionality. So this did its job. It goes to the side. Now, what I'm doing when I'm doing stuff like this, I try to think of thickness of fabric. Now, what what would this actually be made of? How thick would it be? In this particular case, I'm going to Gonna go through and hit it like that. Give it a little bit of extra thickness. It's not so much for shading, it's more of to give myself a rough definition of where place uh, effectively where I'm gonna be putting things. The shading would come later. This one being that I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna get too much more in depth because this is gonna be a very long video if I did very long and very rambly. So there we go. Nice, simple, to the point. So if somebody was going to uh, do any kind of uh, like actually dress up in this outfit, they would know that this would be a little bit thicker, like a plastic or probably a leather belt. That goes in like that. We put some folds right here because it would be getting clamped by this armor piece. Now the armor piece would 
come out and up now to give a little bit of that extra bagginess without making it look like it's too far gone I will keep this as plain as possible but right about here so in other words it would be tight around most of the body but not around where the arm enters in now this would be sitting right on top gonna come in and around right here keep that line a little thin keep this a little thin That way there is a design touch without it being too over the top. So in other words, no sharp pinpoint things of the uh, sharp pinpoint pauldrons like he's wearing uh, like he's wearing needles or something. I don't need him being that sharp. No one needs to be that sharp. And we do a little bit thing like there, kind of suggest that it's in the distance, because again, this is this is me just kind of messing around. Now for this little piece, kind of show that there's a bit of a groove in the front, like in uh, classical uh, classical knight's armor. There's generally a bit of a, an arch here. And now for this, we go in and up. in and up now for stuff like this around the head I tend to uh, tend to give it a little bit of a curl down like that Kind of all going slightly sideways like there. For this. You know, I'm not too sure how I want to lay this. So I will put improbable folds until I figure out a good placement. And for that, it would be like... something like that. It's looking very, very lopsided. <sighs> then again, the head is actually going to get pushed over here.
See, in times like this, I'm absolutely going to push for placement. Let's put in the other arm real quick, kind of show that he's not one-handed. Go a little bit more baggy right there. So for his hand, or at least for his glove, what I'm going to do, go like that, give it a little bit of a flare. Makes it it's uh it's like those uh pseudo fingerless gloves. Ooh, I know. go give that give that bit right there The advantage of working on paper to do all this, in my case, is I can put this down. I don't have to be too correct with my anatomy. I can always fix that in other iterations, like figuring out the right distances for everything and, and how I want it to look exactly, as opposed to quick jotting down of things. Like, for this, if I really wanted to, I could even start going into like uh, bungee levels of design choices and going and and making that look like it's a whole zip up thing. I mean, this ain't a, this actually isn't a bad idea, but I like it being a little bit farther down. So instead, it would kind of catch the save the gut a little, as opposed to just being a, a, a proper. Well, I really can't say proper breastplate. I've never seen a proper best uh, breastplate in person, but. I can do stuff like that and doing and go the uh, DC route of we're doing new characters give them piping plenty of piping but that's a detail that might be a detail I'm going to do now I think I just talked myself into doing piping 
it would definitely make it would definitely give the uh, the pants of this a little bit of uh, extra something visual. Plus, it would plus it would kind of give the idea that if he needs to. Uh, come up with something, there are pockets that he can go into. You know what, as, an, as a nice little f There we go. So you have that, you have that, a little bit of extra character. Plays off with the lines on the weird armored boot type things. And also kind of plays well with the idea of him having armor right here. At this point in time, I don't even know if the uh, thing's in, in here, but... Again, this is this is how I come up with certain character designs. It's not how it always happens, but when I want it to be something more than just a one-off or just a person in normal clothes, this is how I'll go into it. And then to kind of mimic that, Have that right there. So it looks like it's actually connected to something. I learned a, a, a new term recently called petting the line. Unfortunately, that was a per... This is a perfect explan... Uh, like a, a perfect example of me petting the line. You know what? One thing that would also work, since I do have the, uh, so I got the scarf, which I guess the be good to uh, start it someplace up where the scarf actually starts. I was gonna go down, be like there. since it's a fabric. can be funky. In fact, the funkier the better. I think one thing that I'm going to add is... to this particular design 
No, I didn't do it in the. I didn't do it initially. Uh, but I think I'm gonna add a visor. Like those characters that have an improbable, like improbable sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to do improbable sunglasses instead of doing the... Show there's a little bit of dimension to it. I think what I'll do is even if the other forms really can't use it. I'll put in the inexplicable visor. That has no possible way to attach to the face, but just kind of does. That way a person can be... So even when I do the little notch right here, it allows me to do the bird the bird thing or whatever uh, whatever I'd need I like the way this I like the way this is coming out so far and now to kind of give it some sort of a dimension so I can tell what all is what we'll go in and we'll do this A little bit of shading. I know what I think I'm gonna use the uh So that's the difference between the, the HP and the 4H. The 4H you can barely you can barely see it. Now I can I can use this and I can keep going and keep going and keep going and build up a lot. Or I can get it done real quick by using the HP. With the HB I have to be a little more careful. I don't know what I'm going to use for the colors. I'll probably use like a dark blue. And stuff like that. But I like the idea of... I like the way this is coming out. I like the way this looks. In fact, I'm probably going to go and do the... bottom boots in the same dark color. So we have... So we have an inexplicable visor. We have the... Let's put a little extra detail on that. Okay. 
There we go. So we'd have it. Basically, this is how I'm going to have it. So to make so I can do different forms, keep it simple, the arms would effectively disappear, the shoes would effectively disappear, and this would allow me to still have a similar design style within the forms. So if he has wings, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that, you wouldn't see the rest of the arm in his little bunny form. He would still have all of that stuff. He would effectively just have the bunny ears, bunny looking face, and bare feet. If I had him on in the frog form, I'd probably uh drop the fingerless gloves and keep that like the bird form the whole entire arm would be a bird's wing but again the things that would stay the same would be the thing right here little pauldron the breastplate as far as that part of his body goes yeah I like the way this came out. Get rid of that teeny tiny little arrow. Alright. Let's see. At this point in time, it should be past the dateline. But I'm not going to date this just yet. So yeah, there we go. This is the hero from Super Gaff. Still nameless, but I think this is how I'm going to run it. Yeah. Nice and fine. Done with one 4H pencil, one HB.7 lead, a 4H lead holder, a HB lead holder, the magic that is, a needed rubber eraser, and a clip pencil, because I really didn't use this for anything except for before I turned the camera on, I cleaned this off a bit. So, yeah. Thank you for uh, tuning in if you actually stayed this entire time. Uh, Follow directions in the end cap if you stuck around and are willing to watch it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you dug it, hit that like button and maybe share this with your friends. Shout out to my backers on Patreon who helped make this possible. If you'd like to see more of my artwork, simply click the links below. Till next time, folks.